Hey, what's going on guys? Shane here. And today we're talking about how to develop your punching power without any equipment. As you can see, I'm in the new Fight Tips Gym 2.0 and yes, it's a little bare. But this is the before. I want you to use your imagination and picture what the after is going to look like. See the potential. Spoiler. It's going to be sick. So, yes, you can absolutely develop your punching power by slamming medicine balls and throwing weight around and hitting the heavy bag and I recommend that you do those. In fact, I have videos on that. But this video is for those who don't have access to any equipment, like me. I have a place to stand and some body weight. But that's plenty, that's all you need when it comes to developing power. Now the reason why I'm making this video is because one of the premium members on the Fight Tips team network, Martina, came to us and she had a question. She said, her coach said that we want to maximize your strength to develop your punching power. And I found that wording interesting because I'm kind of a stickler when it comes to fight vocabulary. To me, strength is the ability to move weight around. And in fighting, strength is absolutely important, especially in the clinch and in grappling. But I don't see strength as a, as a direct contributor to striking power. Then she goes on to say that it's because she's not continuously explosive. Now explosive is a good word, right? That's synonymous with quick acceleration. But to be continuously explosive sounds like muscle endurance. So we're not gonna be talking about developing muscle endurance in this video. We're not gonna be talking about developing strength. And we're definitely not gonna be talking about building muscle because contrary to what a lot of people still believe, big muscles, does not equal punching power. What we are gonna be talking about today is developing power through rotational torque, developing power through a hard impact, developing power through velocity and acceleration, developing power through leg drive and balance, and most importantly, developing power through, through, what is it, any guesses? Through technique, man, that's the most important one of all. All right, so with that being said, let's take a look at the first exercise. Okay, the first exercise that we're going to look at today is going to hit the core, the upper and lower abdominal muscles, the obliques, and the low back. And I feel like I have to start with the core, otherwise Boss Rutten would be upset with me. And Boss Rutten is probably one of the most powerful people I know. In fact, he's the one who taught me this exercise, so I call them Boss Twists. What you're going to do is you're going to take your hands and put them on your opposite shoulders, and for a minute straight, you're going to twist violently as fast and hard as you can, left and right, using your core twisting the hips, twisting the shoulders, just like you do when you throw your punches, when you throw your hooks, when you throw your kicks. And then we're gonna continue, try not to slow down, try to keep that momentum going, back and forth, twisting for a minute straight. Now here's one add-on that I like to do to make this a little harder, is as I'm twisting, I slowly release my arms, and I open up to where I'm throwing hooks, then I open it up all the way to where I'm just windmilling. And you'll notice that when you do this, it's way harder. You're carrying way more weight and you're going to slow down substantially. And then when you get to like a 20 or 30 second mark, then you bring it back to the hooks. You'll feel the speed increase. Then you bring it all the way back to the fingertips, to the shoulders, and just keep going. Repeat that until you hit that 60 seconds. And you can do three sets of that. You'll be out of breath, you'll feel in your core, and you'll definitely be sore the next day. But what this really helps with is that rotational torque twisting into your shots. Whether it's straight punches, whether it's hooks, whether it's uppercuts, or if it's thrown kicks, if you're focused on that as well. Next exercise now is lower body. We're gonna be working on our leg drive and our balance. Now, anyone will tell you that a punch starts in the feet, travels up the leg, into the core, into the back, down the shoulder, down the arm, into the fist, into the target. But if there's a broken link anywhere in the kinetic chain, then you're gonna lose that energy. Meaning if we don't get that initial leg drive, or we lose it in the core, or we lose it in the shoulder, it's not gonna transfer into the target. We're not gonna get that intended result. So let's start at the beginning point, which is that leg drive. And we're gonna do that by doing two different exercises. The first one is going to be a 180 jump squat. What you're gonna do is you're gonna drop down just like a regular squat and you're gonna explode up and you're gonna twist 180 degrees to face the opposite direction. But as you do that, I want you to hike your knees up as high as you can. And then I want you to stick the landing. So try not to bounce, try to bam, hit the ground with both feet, perfectly balanced. Pause for a moment, and then I want you to repeat. Drop down, spin back. When you do that 180 jump, hike those knees up high, go back into the direction that you came, and stick that landing. And you're gonna do this for, when you need to aim for 12 reps. If you can do 12, 20 is even better. You're gonna do this for three sets. Next exercise you're gonna do after this is split jump lunges. This one is pretty tough. I want you to start off with just regular jump lunges if you can't do this, but this is what they look like. We're going to jump up, we're going to spread our legs even further than where they were at the ground, and then we're going to switch to the opposite side, and we're gonna alternate our legs. Then we jump back up, 
our legs spread out further, and then quickly and violently, we're gonna rip them back and then alternate towards the other side. If you can't do those, then you're just gonna do regular jump lunges and work your way up to it. I recommend doing these on carpet or on the grass or somewhere soft in case you don't stick the landing and you hit your knees. You don't wanna bang your knees on the ground. Again, you wanna land on your feet in a balanced position because we're not just working the leg drive, we're also working on our balance. Next exercise, good old fashioned plyometric push-ups. Now we're working the upper body, working the chest, the shoulders, the triceps with some plyometric push-ups. Plyometric, explosive, fast twitch. That's what we're working right now. Working on that acceleration, working on that velocity so that we can extend the arm quick, get it to where it needs to be, violently strike the target. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go in a push-up position we're going to drop down and we're going to spring up as fast as we can, pushing the floor away, popping up off the ground. From here, you can clap your hands, you can lift your arms forward, you can lift your arms out to the side, or just see how far you can get your hands off the ground and then catch yourself and repeat. Now, these can be difficult. What you wanna do is modify them and start on your knees, keeping your back straight, your head down to your knees should be a straight line, meaning your butt should not be up in the air, all right? Then you can spring up, again, clap your hands, raise your hands forward, out to the side, or just pop off the ground as far as you can, catch yourself and repeat. Again, 12 is great, 20 is better. Whatever you can hit, don't max out, but get close to it and you're gonna do that for three sets. Next up, hard impact. Got a pop quiz for you though to start. Is it possible to throw at 100% speed, but only 5% power? Is that possible? Can I throw a punch at 100% speed but only 5% or 10% power or 1% power? Yes or no, yes or no, true or false, pick one. The answer is absolutely, absolutely you should have the control to be able to do that. In fact, if I turn right now, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna punch this iron pole and I'm only gonna have 1% power but I'm gonna punch it with 100% speed. All right, here, I'll do it right now, watch this. You don't believe me? You're not hitting it, Shane. That ain't hitting it. The point being is impact. Impact is everything. Impact is the difference of hitting something superficially, hitting the first layer of skin, or pulling the punch right as it touches, or hitting it and following through, right? I'd much rather get hit by mm, a feather moving really fast than a tree trunk moving slow, right? If I walk into a tree trunk like this, boom, and the thing doesn't move, that's a hard impact, that hurts, right? But a feather coming at me really fast, there's no impact on it because there's no follow through, there's no density, there's no weight behind it. So we're gonna work on building up our impact by developing the muscles in our forearms and even the ligaments in our wrist and in our hands by doing, now you're gonna be mad at me because this one, it's not equipment because it's still natural, but you gotta do chin-ups. It's really hard to hit uh, the forearm muscles and the back muscles without any bit of uh, uh, equipment or weight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it with you. I'm gonna look around for a tree nearby and we're gonna do some chin-ups, all right? Let's look. And a lot of people have trouble with chin-ups. I understand that. What I like doing is at least three sets of 10 and then I'll always try to build it up. Some days I'll do three sets of 12. Some days I'll do three sets of 15 if I can make it that high. Um, but what you can do to work your way up to doing a chin up is do negatives. So you'll jump up to the position where your chin is over the bar and then you're gonna as slow as possible release and drop it down. Now this is really gonna develop muscle and that's not really what we're looking to do here but we are looking to develop the strength to be able to pull ourselves up using our bicep and our back muscles. But Shane, I thought strength wasn't good for fighting. No, I never said that. I said strength is good for fighting, so it's not good for striking. But what is good for striking is building up the muscles in our forearms. But we first have to develop the muscles in our back and biceps, which are a lot bigger and a lot stronger than the muscles in our forearms. And then we can start to get the benefits of the chin-ups so that we can develop the forearm muscles. And what you can do to develop the forearm muscles if you can't even do chin-ups just yet is dead hang. Hang by the, by the branch or by the pole or by the bar and just see how long you can hold on for before your grip gives out. Having a stronger forearm, a stronger grip, a denser fist is going to give you more powerful punches simply for that point of impact. Last exercise now, the most important one because we're focusing on the most important aspect which is good technique. Now don't mind me if I go on a bit of a rant but I'm gonna keep it simple for you guys. Here's what I like doing, shadow boxing. 
If that's too complicated for you, pick one technique, a jab, and do it 50, 100, 200, 1,000 times. Pick one. You can absolutely do a thousand jabs. Then go down the list. Then you do your cross. Then you do your hook. Then you do your rear hook. Then you do your lead uppercut. Then you do your rear uppercut. Then you do the same with body punches. Now, what I want you to do is hit and stick or punch and stick. What I mean by that, and the best way that I can teach it is when you throw your punch, I want you to imagine that there's a photographer on site and he's taking a picture of you and you want that photographer to capture the moment at which you got full extension of the punch or the punch landed on the target. So let's imagine I'm hitting someone, bang, that's when I want the photographer to take the picture. So at this point right here, I'm focused on having perfect technique, meaning biomechanically my bones are stacked, the, the striking two knuckles are backed behind the ulna bone, which is backed by the humerus, and I'm reinforcing it with my lat muscle and I got some weight on my back leg and my core is engaged and my opposite hand is up and I do that bang, two, three, four, five, six, 50 times, 100 times, 200 times. Then I go to the next punch, cross. Go down the list. But notice what I'm doing there is I'm throwing the punch and I'm sticking it for, I don't know, a second or a split second, and then I pull it back. Bop, and back. Bop, back. Again, this is very similar to the previous one on the point of impact. You wanna make sure that you're not pulling the punch, you're not whipping, you're hitting, bang, and you're penetrating through the target. All right, all of the punches go down the list 200 times, or you just do it when you're shadow boxing. You freestyle, and I can. Obviously in a fight, I'm not gonna stick it and you know, leave my guard exposed and hold it here and let them hit me back. But the point is to minimize that stick to a fraction of a second. Bang, 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 bang. Knowing where the point of impact is and making sure I put a stamp on it, so to speak. All right, so that's your last one focusing on technique is whether it's freestyle shadow boxing or picking a technique and doing it 50, 100, 200 times, uh, and then just making sure that your technique is perfect and you stick it at the point of impact. It's a hot one today. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for your support over the years to make this upgrade to the Fight Tips Gym 2.0 possible. Um, follow along for the progress. I'm throwing a ring in here. I'm gonna mat it all out and putting professional lights in. I'm going to control the audio so there's no more background noise. Um, but to recap today's video, remember that punching power is more so about rotational torque, it's about impact, it's about acceleration and velocity, it's about balance, weight distribution, um, leg drive, not so much about big muscles. Now, doing these exercises may give you muscles, may develop some muscle, but that's a side effect. Having big muscles, doing curls, isn't going to make you a more powerful puncher. And with all of this being said, what's most important is that you're accurate and your timing is on point, all right? Accuracy and timing is way more important than power, way more important than even speed, all right? But again, you wanna have all of those things. You wanna get the technique down, and then you wanna go build those attribute stats and start building up your strength, building up your speed. But get that timing and get that precision down. Until next time, I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the Underdogs.